fuck? The exclamation burst from Caleb Winters' lips as the small spacecraft's engines sputtered and died, leaving him and his alien companion drifting in the vast emptiness of deep space. The human male slammed a fist against the control panel in frustration, his dark eyes flashing with anger beneath his mop of unruly black hair. Turning to the reddish-skinned humanoid female beside him, he growled accusingly, I thought you said this piece of junk had enough fuel to get us to Rigel Station. Ermina, the alien girl, narrowed her golden eyes at him, the jagged scars crisscrossing her bald scalp, catching the dim light of the cockpit. It did, you idiotic primate until you decided to take that little detour to impress me with your hotshot piloting skills. Her musical voice dripped with sarcasm. Well, excuse me for trying to add a little excitement to this boring-ass trip, princess. Caleb shot back, his strong jaw clenching. Not all of us can be content staring at the void for days on end like you pointy-eared space elves. It's called having an appreciation for the subtle beauty of the cosmos, you uncultured ape, Ermina retorted, her delicately pointed ears twitching in annoyance something your species clearly hasn't evolved enough to grasp. Caleb opened his mouth to fire off another insult, but a blaring alarm from the control panel interrupted him. Ermina leaned over to examine the flashing display, her brow furrowing in concern. The life support system is failing, she announced grimly. We've got maybe six hours of air left. Shit. Caleb ran a hand over his scruffy face his anger draining away as the reality of their dire situation sank in. What do we do now? Ermine tapped furiously at the controls, her slender fingers flying. I'm sending out a distress signal on all frequencies, but we're pretty far off the main trade routes out here. The chances of anyone picking it up are slim. Caleb slumped back in the pilot's seat, a humorless chuckle escaping his lips. So this is how it ends, huh? Suffocating to death in a tin can with an irritating alien broad, not exactly the blaze of glory I had in mind. Oh, stop being so melodramatic, Ermina chided, though her voice lacked its usual bite. We're not dead yet, and even if we were, I can think of worse ways to go than in the company of a halfway decent-looking human male. Caleb's eyebrows shot up in surprise at the backhanded compliment. Careful, princess. That almost sounded like a compliment. Ermina rolled her eyes, but a faint smile tugged at the corners of her full lips. Don't let it go to your head, monkey boy. I said halfway decent, not devastatingly handsome. Despite the gravity of their predicament, Caleb found himself grinning back at her. There was just something about this fiery, sarcastic alien girl that got under his skin in the best possible way. As if sensing the shift in the mood, Ermina cleared her throat and turned back to the control panel. Right then, since we're not dead yet, we might as well do something productive with the time we have left. I'm going to keep trying to boost the distress signal. You start looking through the cargo hold for anything useful. Ration packs, oxygen canisters, repair kits, that sort of thing. Caleb nodded and unbuckled his harness, floating up out of the seat in the zero gravity. Aye, aye, Captain, he said with a mock salute. Try not to miss me too much while I'm gone. Ermina snorted. I'll try to contain my despair. Now get moving, you insufferable primate. And Caleb? She paused while her golden eyes meeting his. Be careful. I'd hate to have to finish this little adventure without you. Something warm and unfamiliar bloomed in Caleb's chest at her words. He nodded, not trusting himself to speak, and pushed off towards the rear of the ship. As he rummaged through the cluttered cargo hold, Caleb's mind raced. They were in deep shit, no doubt about that. But somehow the idea of facing certain death alongside Ermina uh, didn't seem quite so terrible. Hell, if he was being honest with himself, there was no one else he'd rather be stranded with. Fuck me, he muttered under his breath, shaking his head ruefully. I must be losing it, developing feelings for an alien and an annoying one at that. This is all your fault, you bastard, he added, glaring down at a certain part of his anatomy that had begun to take an interest in the proceedings. Still, as he gathered up the meager supplies and made his way back to the cockpit, Caleb couldn't help but feel a flicker of hope. They were smart, they were resourceful, and most importantly, they had each other. Maybe, just maybe, they'd find a way out of this mess. And if not, well, there were worse ways to spend your final moments than verbally sparring with a beautiful alien woman. With a roguish grin, Caleb ducked back into the cockpit and tossed Ermina a ration pack. Dinner is served, milady. Bon appetit. 
Ermina caught the pack deftly and ripped it open, wrinkling her nose at the unappetizing contents. Mmm, delicious. You really know how to treat a girl, Winters. What can I say? I'm a hopeless romantic. Caleb winked at her as he strapped himself back into the pilot's seat. So any luck with the distress signal? Ermina shook her head, her expression grim. Nothing yet, but I'll keep trying. In the meantime, let's go over our options. As the two unlikely allies put their heads together, the crippled ship drifted ever deeper into the star-flecked void, their fates intertwined, their futures uncertain. But one thing was crystal clear. Come hell or high water, they would face whatever lay ahead together. Two lost souls forged in the crucible of adversity, bound by the unbreakable bonds of snark, survival, and just maybe something more. It was going to be one hell of a ride. Hours ticked by as Caleb and Ermina worked tirelessly to find a solution to their predicament. They took turns monitoring the distress signal and scouring the ship for anything that might help them conserve power or extend their dwindling air supply. But as the life support system's readings grew more and more dire, a heavy sense of despair began to settle over the small craft. Caleb slumped against the wall of the cargo hold, his shoulders sagging with exhaustion and defeat. It's no use, he muttered, his voice rough with emotion. We've tried everything. There's nothing left to do but wait for the end. Ermina looked up from where she was hunched over a tangle of wires, her golden eyes fierce with determination. Don't you dare give up on me now, Winters, she growled, jabbing a finger at him. We're not finished yet. Caleb let out a humorless laugh. Face it, princess, we're fucked. No one's coming to save us, and we're almost out of time. Ermina pushed herself to her feet and stalked over to him, her scarred face inches from his. Listen to me, you stubborn ape, she hissed her breath hot against his skin. I refuse to die like this, suffocating in this fucking tin can, and I sure as hell refuse to let you die either. Caleb's eyes widened at the intensity in her voice. Why do you care so much about what happens to me? He asked softly, searching her face for answers. For a long moment, Ermina was silent, her gaze locked with his. Then slowly, she reached up and cupped his cheek with one hand her thumb brushing over the rough stubble on his jaw. Because, you infuriating, impossible man, she whispered, her voice trembling with emotion. Somewhere along the way, against my better judgment, I started to fall for you. Caleb's heart stuttered in his chest at her words. Ermina, he breathed, his own hand coming up to cover hers. I, I feel the same way. I don't know how or when it happened, but I can't imagine facing this without you. A single tear slipped down Ermina's cheek as she leaned in and pressed her forehead against his. Then let's not waste whatever time we have left, she murmured, her lips a hair's breadth from his. If we're going to die, I want to do it knowing that I didn't let fear hold me back from what I want. With that, she closed the distance between them and captured his mouth in a searing kiss. Caleb groaned and pulled her closer, his hands roaming over her lithe body as he lost himself in the taste and feel of her. They stumbled backwards until Caleb's legs hit a storage crate, and he sat down heavily, pulling Ermina onto his lap. She straddled him, grinding her hips against his growing arousal as she trailed hot, open-mouthed kisses along his jaw and down his neck. Caleb's hands found the zipper of her jumpsuit and tugged it down, revealing smooth, reddish skin and full, perfect breasts. He cupped them in his palms, thumbing her nipples until they pebbled, and she gasped against his mouth. Caleb, Ermina panted, her fingers fumbling with the fastening of his pants. I need you, now. He lifted his hips, helping her shove his pants down just enough to free his straining erection. Ermina wrapped her hand around him, stroking him from base to tip as she positioned herself over him. With one smooth motion, she sank down onto his length, engulfing him in her tight, wet heat. They both moaned at the sensation. Ermina's head falling back in ecstasy as she began to move, rolling her hips in a slow, sensual rhythm. Caleb gripped her hips, guiding her movements as he thrust up into her, matching her pace. The air around them grew thick with the sounds of their passion, breathy moans and whispered endearments, punctuated by the slap of flesh against flesh. Ermina braced her hands on Caleb's shoulders, her nails digging into his skin as she rode him harder, chasing her climax. Caleb could feel her tightening around him, her inner muscles fluttering and clenching as she neared the edge. That's it, baby, he encouraged her, 
one hand sliding between their bodies to rub circles around her swollen bottom. Come for me. Let me feel you. With a keening cry, Ermina shattered, her release triggering Caleb's own. He buried his face in the crook of her neck, muffling his shout of pleasure against her skin as he emptied himself deep inside her. Afterwards, they lay entwined in each other's arms, their skins slick with sweat and their hearts racing in tandem. Ermina traced idle patterns on Caleb's chest with one finger, her head pillowed on his shoulder. Caleb? She whispered, breaking the comfortable silence that had settled over them. Hmm. He pressed a kiss to the top of her bald head, marveling at how right it felt to hold her like this. I just wanted to say, if this is the end, if these are our last moments together, I'm glad I got to spend them with you. Caleb tightened his arms around her, emotion welling up in his throat. Me too, princess, he rasped, his voice thick with unshed tears. Me too. They clung to each other as the life support system's alarms grew more and more insistent, the flashing red lights painting the walls of the ship in an eerie, pulsing glow. The proximity alert continued to blare as Caleb and Ermina stumbled into the cockpit, their limbs heavy and their vision blurry from oxygen deprivation. They collapsed into their seats, gasping for air as they watched the massive ship approach on the view screen. Unidentified craft, this is the Galactic Patrol Ship Endeavor. A crisp, authoritative voice crackled over the comms. We have received your distress signal and are here to assist. Please identify yourselves and prepare for docking. Caleb fumbled for the comms, his fingers clumsy and uncoordinated. This, this is the cargo ship Rust Bucket, he managed, his words slurred and barely coherent. We're out of fuel and air. Two crew need immediate assistance. Acknowledge, Rust Bucket, the voice responded, a note of concern creeping into their tone. We're initiating emergency docking procedures now. Hang in there, the Endeavor maneuvered alongside their ship the docking clamps engaging with a series of clangs and hisses. Caleb and Ermina clung to each other, their breaths shallow and labored, as they waited for the airlock to cycle open. As the door finally slid open, a team of medics in protective gear rushed in, carrying oxygen tanks and stretchers. They quickly assessed the situation, then carefully lifted Caleb and Ermina onto the stretchers, fitting them with oxygen masks. You're going to be all right, one of the medics assured them her voice muffled by her helmet. We'll get you to the med bay and take care of you. Caleb and Ermina could only nod weakly, their eyes fluttering shut as exhaustion and relief washed over them. They barely registered the journey to the med bay, drifting in and out of consciousness as the medics worked to stabilize them. When they finally came to, they found themselves lying in ad calibre beds in the Endeavor's med bay, IVs in their arms and monitors beeping steadily beside them. A tall, broad-shouldered human man in a crisp galactic patrol uniform stood at the foot of their beds, a look of concern on his face. Welcome back, he said, his voice warm and reassuring. I'm Captain Elias Corbin. You gave us quite a scare there. How are you feeling? Caleb and Ermina exchanged a look, taking stock of their condition. They were weak and groggy, but the oxygen and fluids were already working wonders. Better, Caleb croaked, his voice hoarse from disuse. Thank you for saving us. Captain Corvin smiled, shaking his head. We're just glad we got to you in time. You were in pretty bad shape when we brought you aboard. What happened out there? Caleb and Ermina took turns recounting their story, their words coming slowly at first, then gaining strength as they went on. They told him about the fuel leak, the dwindling supplies, the desperate days of rationing and hoping for rescue. I thought, I thought we were done for. Caleb admitted, his voice rough with emotion. I was ready to give up, but Ermina, she wouldn't let me. She kept fighting, kept believing that we'd make it somehow. Ermina reached out and took his hand, giving it a gentle squeeze. I couldn't have done it without you, Caleb, she said softly. You kept me going, even when I wanted to give in to despair. We saved each other out there. Captain Corvin listened intently, his expression a mix of sympathy and admiration. You two have been through hell, he said when they finished, but you survived against all odds. That's no small feat. He paused, consulting a data pad in his hand. We're en route to Rigel Station now, he continued. We'll drop you off there and make sure you get the care and support you need. In the meantime, rest and recover. You've earned it. Caleb and Ermina nodded gratefully, their eyes already growing heavy with exhaustion. 
As Captain Corbin left the med bay, they turned to each other, their hands still clasped tightly together. We made it, Ermina, Caleb whispered, his voice thick with emotion. We're going to be okay. Ermina smiled, tears of relief and joy welling in her eyes. I know, she replied, bringing his hand to her lips and pressing a soft kiss to his knuckles. And whatever comes next, we'll face it together. You and me against the universe. Caleb grinned, his heart swelling with love for this incredible woman who had come into his life so unexpectedly. Damn straight, princess, he murmured, his eyes drifting shut. You and me, always. And as they slipped into a deep healing sleep, Caleb and Ermina knew that they had found something rare and precious amidst the vast emptiness of space. Not just love, but a true partnership, forged in the fires of adversity and tempered by the unbreakable bonds of trust, respect, and devotion. Together they had survived the impossible. Together they had found hope in the darkness. And together they would face whatever challenges lay ahead, hand in hand, heart to heart ready to take on the universe and write their own story among the stars.